In this video, we're going to set up some collision detection to get our player, which is the bottle, to actually uh, collide with this trash can here and then be removed from the screen. So picking up where we left off, we have our player falling and we can move it. Now we're going to add that new object, which will be the bin, and we're going to do that with a new class. Within our game here, let's create a new folder and call this sprites. And then we can actually move our player up into this folder. Visual Studio Code should refactor that for us, but everything should run the same. And now within our sprites here, let's create a new file as well and call this the bin. And similar to our player, this is going to be a sprite component. So let me just copy this line over and then import these few components. Now we're going to change this to be a bin and then we will override that on load. And in a similar way to what we do with our player, let's actually just copy these few things over and adjust them. We will have this as a sync. And instead of loading the bottle, we're going to add a new file here, which will be called our recycle bin. So let's add that to our images and then modify this to be bin recycle. And the size here we could keep at 100. And then for the position, we want this to be at the bottom instead of at the top. So our bottle is starting at the top, but if we were to, instead of using the negative version of this, use the positive game height and subtract the half of the size, we should actually get the sprite position down at the bottom here. Now, instead of using game height, we can just use the game ref of size of Y which will be the same value since we are linked to the game ref here. So this is good. We should have this position correctly. So let's go to our world and add this. And in our world here, we can add the, we can add a bin. And if we rerun, you'll see we do get a bin showing up down here. Now the bin is a bit small, so let's go ahead and actually change the size to be 300 and then rerun this. And that's a better size bin. It does matter which order you add these. So if we add the player after the bin, you're gonna see after this falls, it's going to be in front of the bin. So whichever one you add first is going to be further back. But in this case, it's actually better this way because it appears that the player hides or goes into the bin rather. But you also notice that the player is still on the screen. You can still see it. And if you move it, you can actually still move it. It is still there. So we want to add some collision detection so that when the player hits the bin, it is removed from the screen. First, we need to go to our game and add the has collision detection. And that will just happen after the keyboard events. We can add has collision detection. And then we need to basically tell our game that both of these two things could collide. So let's start with the player. In our onload on the player, we just need to add a rectangular hitbox. This is just going to tell the game that this can be hit or it can collide. And we're going to do the same thing on the bin and add that rectangular hitbox. Now, another nice thing that we can do while developing is within our game itself, since we aren't using the on load, we need to actually add that override back in. But if we do add the on load here, then we can set the debug mode equal to true. It's going to kind of show us those hitboxes a little bit. So if we rerun it now, you can see where these hitboxes are. And you'll notice that this image has a bit of spacing. That is because the image itself actually does have spacing. So I would recommend you updating your images and I'll do that later, but for now, I think this will be fine. So the last thing we need to do is actually detect that collision. So within our bin, we're going to add the collision callbacks. So what we want to do now is know when the bin is colliding with something. And we can do that with the on collision start. And the first thing we want to check within here is if it's colliding with a player. So if the other, which would be the other object it's colliding with is a player, we will have to import that. Then what we're going to do is actually just remove the player. And we can do that with other dot remove from parent. 
And that is going to remove that other object, which is the player, from the game entirely. So if we save this and rerun it, now if the now when these two interact, what we would expect is the bottle to just disappear. So we do have kind of an issue here, and that is that it is disappearing as soon as it touches this border up here. Not only do we want to check if it's colliding, but we want to check if it's colliding and that the position, so the other here in this case is the player. So if the other's Y position is greater than the position of our current object here, which would just be the position of Y, that would mean that the center of the bottle is going to be past the center of the object here. So if we rerun this, the bottle should basically go behind this object and then be removed. All right, so I updated my image, so there's basically no more padding around the image. And this is really what you want to have for all of your objects. You want them to be no padding. You don't want any padding on them, especially if they're going to be having collisions. So now the top and bottom of this are flat to the edge. You can see as the bottle falls down, you can move the bottle. And if you move it over here and it doesn't collide with this, that's fine. It just stays on the screen. But also if you pop it over a little bit, since the collision box is the entire thing, it will actually just remove that from the screen. This is kind of a nice introduction of how you can do collisions and as the video series here continues, we will be looking at a couple other types of collisions as well.